at 25 years old, I hate sex. My initiation into the vast, complicated world of sex began in a similar manner as most people's does, via their dad's porn collection. I wasn't ballsy enough to dig through anything that belonged to my parents, but especially not anything that belonged to my new stepfather. My mother, however, adopted the role of house snoop with alarming intuitive accuracy. At nine years old, my brother and I sit, hunched together at the top of the stairs in our new house in this new country of America. My mother screams smack into our eardrums, pulsing upwards from the kitchen downstairs. How the fuck could you do this? How? How? This form of upheaval was supposed to be left behind us in England. This was not part of the let's move to America deal. We exchange a soundless sibling glance. As the torrent of anger continues to race up through, through the floorboards, brother and I pretend that we're on a secret mission, spies sent to investigate, and begin our ninja crawl down the stairs. We enter a war zone. What's going on? Brother's voice wavers in angst against the question he doesn't really want to ask, doesn't really want to know the answer to. Tell them! Tell them! Words thick with fury rocket through the air. Brother and I have had enough mischievous moments in our short lives to know that when mom is yelling like that, you are in deep, deep trouble. Like, pack your bags, you now have to go live in the garden, don't worry, I'll throw you scraps of food when I can, kind of trouble. My stepfather, an American man through and through, with dark hair, a six foot two stature, and as strong as an Indian, Indiana farm boy, which he was, begins to respond with distressing calm. Uh oh. Brother and I both begin to try and shake our heads in a warning to him that my mom might not notice. We both know that when you're being yelled at like that, calm is not the response. But the misplaced emotion is being directed towards us as he quietly says, I watch porn. 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 My mind is scrambling. It's a four-letter word and seems to be bad, but it's not any of the four-letter words that I'm not allowed to say. What's porn? I ask, both out of necessity because now I'm more confused than ever, but also out of pure curiosity. My stepfather, a proud military man that drives fast, sweeps me up in one arm, can bench press my brother, stands, slouched and cowering. His gaze remains lowered as it travels over the neatly set dinner table, seeking a rogue utensil to fix. I like to watch two people have sex. A shrug of his shoulders that ends in a slump follows as he finishes his confession. I like to watch people fuck each other. Discovering sex by ways of a raging internet porn addiction from your would-be savior stepfather has its downsides. Through my mother's own research added to hours of marriage counseling sessions, I learned more about internet porn addiction and the way it infiltrates the home than how to be a teenager. Portia! My name is a bark that resounds throughout the house. Shit. At 14, hearing that corroded anger in my mother's voice still has me convinced that I'm going to go be sent to live in the yard. Yeah, mom. What is this? Did you look at this? Sitting in the living room in front of the family computer. Don't forget, this was back in the day of dial-up and one computer households. Is my mother. On the screen is a five by three grid of women, naked, with their knees drawn up to their rib cages, directing a perfectly polished fingernail down towards their well-groomed crotches. As though their legs were the two clickers on the side of a computer mouse with the little gray scrolly thing in the middle being their crotches. <laughs> Flashing, I know, it's never been so sexy, huh? <laughs> Flashing across the screen in neon letters is an invitation that reads, click my button. <laughs> clever, porn developers, very clever. But at 14, I didn't think this cyber enemy was so cute. As witnessing the way this addiction was breaking down my mother, whom had deteriorated to the point that she now borrowed my middle school clothes and call sporadic family interrogations to uncover the source of pornographic pop-up advertisements. By the time my stepfather and mother finalized their divorce a few, a few years later, I knew two truths about sex. First, porn could tear apart families. Second, if it's a fight between porn or me, porn 
is the thing that gets chosen. At 17, I met my first love, someone who did choose me, a tattooed, music-obsessed golden boy who we're going to refer to as Toxic Penis. <laughs> he snuck us into SeaWorld, had a fake ID to buy us beer, and a deep Christian faith that built into him the belief that watching porn was not only bad, but inexcusable filth. I had the best of both worlds. A gorgeous bad boy to balance out my shackling obsession with following the rules, as well as a respecting 17-year-old man-child that thought watching porn was the same as cheating on me. I lost my virginity to toxic penis on an air mattress the night of my senior year homecoming dance. And we were in love. That crazy head over heels, never gonna feel this way again. I'd die without you. No, you say goodnight first. Daydreaming, can't eat, won't sleep. What are we gonna name our kids? That kind of in love. And on this night, consumed by the cold October air of my best friend's boyfriend's garage, I feel so sorry for everyone that isn't me because they can't possibly ever know what love like this feels like. That year we shared was mainly comprised of inky black skies, polka dotted with bright yellow stars, glimpsed from our backs as we stole moments together on the edges of cliffs, parks, and deserted beaches. We weren't just falling in love, we're the engineers that built that adrenaline spiking roller coaster. But best of all, there's no shame associated with this kind of sex. This was an expression of love. We broke up the night before I left for college in the back of my beat up 92 Chevy Blazer. Please don't do this, I begged. This is for the best, he explained. You'll end up falling for someone else, some frat boy, and we'll just end up hating each other. His resolve was unfaltering. My heart crumbled. I was adamant that I wouldn't lose to sex again. If his fear was me having sex with someone else, then damn it, I was going to spend every Friday and Saturday night sober and alone in my dorm. If his concerns bordered on my finding someone more suitable than him, then I simply didn't talk to anyone that had even the remotest possibility of becoming a romantic interest. Sure, there were the nights of never-ending crying sessions that were interrogated as saltwater confessions. Through innumerable phone calls, he made it clear I was the sole cause of his pain and suffering. I gathered as much by being told repeatedly that I was the sole cause of his pain and suffering. <laughs> and of course, the cruel name-calling. But for the most part, as really bad relationships go, we were making it work. Except, of course, for the sex thing. Though we had first ventured into the world of lost virginity together with my temporary upheaval to Los Angeles, sex was a sequestered act. His rules were simple. We were not allowed to have sex unless we were solidified as boyfriend and girlfriend. We were allowed to perform every form of sex, if it was with each other, no masturbation allowed, as long as there was no penile vaginal intercourse. For some reason, God would frown disappointedly at this act, though the others were fair game. For three years, I fell hopelessly into belief that this form of intercourse was somehow superior, more intimate, and more godly than the rest. At 20, against all odds in three years of trying to secure my place in the heart of another, I did engage in penile vaginal intercourse with someone else. And no, not because I'm a lying, conniving whore. I mean, I might be. <laughs> but because I was 20, things happen. <laughs> at the end of that young, sweet, contrived attempt at promiscuity, I returned home victorious with my newfound sexuality as a trophy. I saw, I took, and I damn well conquered. Whore. The word shrieks through the phone. Almost every night, I am jarred out of my sleep by the persistent buzzing of my high school sweetheart needing me to confirm that I am a piece of shit. At three in the morning, of course it's his number. You were sleeping. We're past the point of salutations. What's wrong? Are you okay? Am I okay? I'm in love with a fucking whore. A low-pitched chuckle forces its way out of the speaker. No, I'm not okay. I try to choke out and I'm sorry, but the words jam in my throat. 
He doesn't want to hear it, and I don't want to say it. I just want this to be over. His solution is for us to be officially back together again. And if you've been paying attention, then you know. Being boyfriend-girlfriend means that under the watchful gaze of his God, we are finally able to consummate our love again. <coughs> Barebacked on the cold concrete floor of his garage, he enters me after a three-year hiatus. I gasp in relief. Not for pleasure, but for, for what I hope will be the end to the pre-dawn phone calls, the withholding of sex, the mind fucks, and the name calling. While I smile up at him, he looks down at me and with disgust says, now all I can think about is how fucking dirty you are. If I don't want to have sex with him, then it's because I am too used up. If I don't want to have sex with him, it doesn't matter because we still do. We break up, this time for good, allowing me to date not one, but two more assholes. <laughs> By the age of 24, I think that the man I'm having sex with can't hear me because I am not worth hearing. I am so convinced that sex and shame are one and the same that it makes sense to me that stopping when I say no would be counterintuitive. The shame is so much heavier when it's attempted to be stopped. For two years, I hardly ingest anything, and when I do, it is picked from a scant, bizarre list that is essentially sugar-free, fat-free, dairy-free, and carb-free. And if I intake too much, then I resort to purging. I lose 30 pounds in a matter of months. I don't tell anyone about my condition and deny any inquiries, not necessarily because I want them to be, not necessarily because I don't want them to find out, but because I don't want to share how goddamn good it feels, how much I love being in this tight control over my body for once. I don't want to tell anyone because I'm afraid that if I do, then they'll force me to stop, and I'm so fucking tired of people telling me what to do with my body. I'm 29, and I no longer hate sex. I was listening, thank you. I was listening to a podcast the other day, a storytelling one, and the narrator talks about her inner pussy power. Inner pussy power. Other than the simple draw of the phrase because it has the words pussy and power in it, the idea of also owning that strength creates a different surge of excitement within me. Glennon Doyle Melton said, be messy and complicated and afraid and show up anyways. My messy, complicated, and absolutely terrified self is going to keep showing up until I find that inner pussy power. Thank you. <laughs>